Your love is like radiant diamonds bursting inside us. We cannot contain your love will. All right, here we are. Uh, Israel, the sun is cresting over the Mediterranean Sea. In the distance behind me, you can see the ancient city of Joppa. And this is where so much history took place from where Jonah fled to in order to flee to go away from Nineveh. It's the place in Acts chapter 9 and 10 where Peter had come and had raised Tabitha from the dead. And then Cornelius in Caesarea was praying and he had been faithful to give alms and help you know with the temple and all of that and an angel appeared to him and said call for simon whose surname is peter and he's staying in a house down by the sea with a man by the name of simon the tanner go to him and he'll tell you what you have to do and so it was there when peter was on the roof of the house that the curtain came down he saw the vision three times it said rise peter kill and eat he saw all kinds of four-footed unclean beasts and things of that nature and he said I'm not going to do it Lord I've never eaten anything unclean he said what I've called clean you must not call unclean and this is the place where God gave revelation that he was calling the Gentiles into the kingdom they'd be made clean through the blood of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. praise God singing your name God of mercy you love I'm standing here in the, really what would be the cradle of, of Christianity with regard to uh, the message going into the Gentile world. We're in Caesarea Maritime. And actually, if you'll look right over here, this is kind of a, a castle that was built by Herod the Great. Pontius Pilate stayed here. But probably most uh, readily known is the fact that, well, I already gave you one little piece of information about Joppa. Uh, Simon the Tanner, Peter staying with him down by the sea. Well, this is Caesarea where Cornelius was visited by an angel who had been giving alms and praying and all that. And an angel visited him and said, send to Joppa for a man by the name of, of Simon, whose surname is Peter. He's down by the sea there in Joppa. And this is where this revelation came from. Uh, and so this is just really a neat place to be where, again, the cradle of Christianity was sent out to the Gentile world. May this offering stretch across the skies These hallelujahs be multiplied Kind of on a probably man-made beach in Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee, and uh, that's the Golan Golan Heights behind me. But uh, this is the area of so much history of Jesus calling his disciples off of the shores of the Sea of Galilee, saying, "Follow me," and they threw their nets down and they followed him. Uh, this is. The waters that uh, he fell asleep in the bottom of the boat and they were freaking out and woke him up and he said he rebuked the wind and the waves and said peace be still and they were freaking out that this guy had authority over the over the wind and the and the waves these are the waters that he walked on and uh, Peter said 
Lord, if that's you, call me out. And he said, step out. And, uh, you know, we want to follow the Lord, man. Sometimes the Lord calls us and he says, it's time to step out. And, uh, of course, Peter began to fail. And I think sometimes the Lord wonders how deep we're going to sink before we'll call out to him. Say, Lord, save me, you know. And, uh, and the Lord was right, right there for him, picked him up, established his footing, walked with him. And having been saved by him, we read that they worshipped him. And, and it's an appropriate response. Having been saved by him, it's appropriate that we give our worship to him. God of Israel, the tribe of Dan. This is 1 Kings chapter 12. Uh, the sin of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, when he put uh, he put two golden calves, one in the mountains of Ephraim and here in Dan, and said, these are your gods, O Israel. Don't go to Jerusalem. Come here and worship. This is kind of a model of a altar with the horns on the side. These are the steps uh, leading up to the high place. And so uh, this is the place where the sin you know, the, of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that led northern Israel back into idolatry. This is where it happened. Look it up. Interesting that right on the outskirts of this high spot in the northern tribe of Dan, 1 Kings chapter 12, is a little more modern observation bunker where the military can observe uh, Lebanon, Hezbollah, whatever this is, this is uh, Lebanon out there and uh, they observe from this bunker. Thank you. Okay, behind me now is, uh, you read of it in scripture in Genesis 14 when, you remember when Abraham's nephew Lot was taken captive because he was living down around Sodom? And he armed his 318 servants who were born to his own house, trained for war. And he pursued those kings north as far as Dan. And this is, this is that place, 4,500 years old, older than the pyramids, older than, you know, it's unbelievable. Genesis 14, 14. I say unbelievable. That's kind of not the best choice. Completely believable. There it is in, uh, I can't even say black and white. There's a, there it is right there. Praise God. Behind me is where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. You can see that little cave opening. And above it, it looks like two cave ins. That's the actual entrance where the man's goat or whatever fell in. And they went down there and explored. Of course, you can hear, maybe see the waterfalls behind me. But then when you turn around, what's really cool here, I shouldn't say really cool, the whole thing's really cool. When you turn around and look, back behind me here in the distance is Mount Nebo. And that is the mountain upon which Moses stood. And uh, when God said, look, you're not going to go into the promised land, uh, but here's what I'm going to let you do. I'm going to let you climb up and uh, I'm going to let you see it before you die. And that's the mountain upon which he climbed and saw it uh, with his eyes.
on the Mount of Olives, absolutely uh, rich with New Testament and Old Testament history. This is the place where uh, Jesus <clears throat> did the Palm Sunday on the Palm Sunday Road, where he came down, uh, entered into Jerusalem through the Kidron Valley, which is behind me. Uh, the people were laying down palm branches, shouting, Hosanna, save now. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It's a place where even that week, it's a, uh, along this ridge, he wept over Jerusalem, saying, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, had you only known this day the things that would make for your peace. Uh, he pronounced judgment over Jerusalem in this place. He, he, Matthew 24, regarding the end times and what the signs be, took place on this mountain. He ascended from this mountain and he will descend. He, when he returns, he will touch down uh, on the Mount of Olives. Right now, I'm uh, coming in to focus with Pastor David Guzik. Here we are on site of the Garden Tomb. Garden baby. Tomb. This man has been a phenomenal uh, teacher, mentor throughout the last couple weeks. He gave me the opportunity to teach uh, or share on the Sea of Galilee. No, you taught. It wasn't just sharing, and, it was uh, teaching. And uh, so I just want to say thank you. And uh, hey, you got any words of encouragement for the kind folks at Calvary Chapel Joplin? You know what? How could you say anything else right here than to say, He's risen indeed. Amen. The resurrected Jesus makes all the difference in our life. Praise God.